Okay, welcome back to my Saturday afternoon, everyone. It's about uh, 3.45, almost 4 o'clock on uh, Saturday, and I've got the little Navi loaded up for its first moto camping trip. I don't know if this is going to be a success or a failure, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> I didn't make any reservations. This is just winging it. Uh, I'm going to ride out to uh, Stephen F. Austin State Park about 45 miles away, 40 miles away, whatever it is, and... Uh, camp up for the night. Uh, my whole camp kit is here. Uh, that thing is chock full. I might show you the mess in there when I get to camp if there's time. But uh, it's a uh, chock full of uh, tripods and <laughs> all my AV gear and all that kind of stuff. But uh, camp lives right there. That's that's it. Uh, it's a dry spec. Forget. I think this is the D28 double-ended roll bag. It's a, it's a great little bag. I've used it. You can tell it's pretty dirty. Anyway, I'm getting on the road. Now, go. Key. Guess. On. Run. Choke. Ugh. Time to go. I'm going to be getting there uh, pretty close to sunset. It's going to take me about an hour or so to get there, I think. We'll see how it, uh, how it plays. Let's go. Probably won't record the whole trip because there's not much for you to see except for uh, roads. So I'm just going to go. I'm not even wearing my uh, rain gear at the moment. I'm prepared for rain because it's been uh, storming off and on all day. You can tell by the wet roads. We haven't had a lot of rain here in the Katy area, but it's been all around us. So I imagine I'm going to run into some pretty wet roads uh, headed out west toward uh, Stephen F. Austin. So if I were on a faster steed, I could just jump on I-10 and go and uh, just get off right there at uh, Sealy. But I am not on a faster steed, so I will be taking the back roads my normal route out to uh, 90 alternate uh, highway 90 and that hooks up to 359 and then up and around and uh, puts me in right there north of the park I have to go down uh, a little side road I always forget the numbers of the highways over there but I know where I'm going I think now I brought a, a hammock only with me this time uh, I was gonna bring one of my bigger tents but I thought eh. Uh, if it's going to be raining, I'd much rather be uh, up off the ground. Uh, the uh, Sunda 2, Kamek Sunda 2, uh, I thought about bringing, but it's pretty beefy. I mean, it's almost the same size as this whole roll bag I've got back there. And uh, in that roll bag, I have the Kamek Mantis uh, with a couple of little add-ons that I've put in it that are very nice. Uh, my straps. Uh, I've got a, an REI camp chair, a little uh, fold-up or you know, roll-up, kind of a bag chair thing. Uh, what else do I have in there? I've got an underquilt, an overquilt. I don't think it's going to get cold enough tonight to really need either one of them, but I'll probably put the, uh, the underquilt under me. It helps get rid of uh, over-splash, you know, uh, from the, the rain beating up against the bottom of your hammock. So. Uh, it gets dirty, but it wipes off. It's easy. <clears throat> it's made by Sierra Madre Research. Their Puffle 40 degree, I think it is, synthetic. And then the uh, overquilt that I've got is made by Gravel. And I think they call it the layover. It's made for flights, you know, when you're uh, hanging out in cold airports and, uh, you know, airplanes and whatnot when it's just a little too chilly. It's a real small blanket. Uh, folds down into its own bag uh, and it's oh man just barely the size of a soda can it's real small but it offers just enough uh, warmth to keep the cool air from circulating over the top of you it's pretty good and then I usually just sleep in my base layers or my jacket or whatever if I get too chilly fine with me and then uh, I think that's it for what's in the bag I'll have to do an unbagging unboxing whatever show all the, the gear. Now I didn't bring full cook kit, any of that stuff. Uh, not really that kind of a camp out. Uh, I'm going to uh, get breakfast somewhere locally. Eat my food uh, there close. If I were staying more than a couple days then yeah I'd go ahead and bring my camp kit, breakfast kit, all that. You know, do my normal coffee and oatmeal and that sort of thing but uh, I think I'll just live off the land so to speak the city land <laughs> so we'll see how my steady fuel economy goes uh, 
I'm already dipping down off of that full mark. Now I haven't been filling this thing all the way up. I'm, I'm filling it exactly as Honda specifies in the manual, which is don't go all the way up the neck, you know, stop at that bar down there. So that's what I've been doing. And uh, just my trip back from breakfast this morning, it's already come down, you know, to what looks like three quarter, which is a little strange, but anyway, the gauge is not 100% linear. Uh, the, the telling tale will be how far you get on a full tank. Now, I've been getting about 55 to 60 miles before it uh, pukes on uh, needing reserve. So, calculated fuel economy for that last one that I did. I think it was 90, 93, 94, something like that, if you went full empty. Uh, or, I guess, let me rephrase what I put in it calculated to be 93 or 94. If this is a 0.8 or 0.9 gallon tank, whatever that is, uh, you're probably looking at about 90 miles out of this thing. Uh, maybe a little less, 85 to 90 miles before you need to fill it up. But it's still breaking in and that mileage might increase as things uh, progress, so we'll see. Uh, I was really hoping to get closer to 110 out of it which would give you right at a hundred mile range, but it looks like it's probably going to be coming up about uh, 10 short of that. So we'll see. And my idle is high right now uh, to keep it from dying out. I need to try to bring it down a little bit and see if that uh, behaves itself. If it doesn't, then I've got to work on it. Uh, air fuel ratio, whatever. He just used more fuel right there in that acceleration run than I'll probably use halfway out there to the park. <laughs> so on my uh, morning commute return uh, from breakfast, uh, I was saying that uh, any new Navi owners, you got to be careful with these tires. They are not good tires for wet. Uh, they do slip around a lot. Uh, I haven't even looked at the brand on them yet. It's kind of irrelevant if they suck they're going away anyway uh, the just you know even moderate cornering they were slipping and sliding I felt the front wheel skitter on me a couple times where you know most of my other any of my other bikes they, they wouldn't do that and I'm not going fast so it's not like I'm pushing the limits or anything so these tires gotta go the rear tires should be pretty easy to find 10 inch or very common uh, this particular size of 12 doesn't seem to be a uh, common item, so I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll check uh, Chaparral Motorsports, um, Revzilla. Uh, there's quite a few options out there. I typically buy tires through ti uh, discount tire. Jeez, I can't get it right. Uh, Dennis Kirk, because their prices are always really good. Their shipping is super fast. Uh, they source them through other warehouses and just have them drop ship but prices are really good when i've ordered from dennis kirk it seems like i've uh, noticed that they come from other power sports stores uh, but the prices are always really really good so i'll find something i would really like to get some uh, michelin city grips because i trust those i've used them on several scoots and i do like them i don't like these there's some weird brand i can't even see it uh MFR, MF, MRF, MRF, however MRF is. Gonna cheap off brand, whatever came out of uh, Mexico or India. Lowest dollar budget manufacturer you can get, I'm sure. Anyway, I'll shut it down here, save some battery. Uh, I did install a uh, USB charger uh, under the seat on the battery. Uh, I don't have it keyed into accessory circuit, you know, on off with the switch or anything yet. So I just have to remember to unplug the little SAE adapter uh, to not drain my battery. Uh, if you don't have a load on it, it's not going to sap your battery right away, but slowly it will. But anyway, so I can charge my batteries uh, and all my gear for the uh, live stream tonight. Hopefully if it all works out. Uh, but I'll save this battery or what I've got of it because not going to be much to see. If it uh, gets interesting out here on the back roads, then I will turn it back on and say howdy. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. All right, I'm turning on the park road, which is Park Road 38. And uh, trip didn't take long to get here. I just maintained a steady 45, kind of varied it up and down. Traffic behind was pretty light, so 
skidded over and let a couple of trucks go by but other than that nothing much going on on the roads today I'm one of the only crazy people out here on it especially on a bike I haven't seen another motorcycle yet usually there's a few out here on the weekends but not today so I couldn't find my Texas State Parks card uh, I buy a membership every year it's you know, 75 bucks or something like that and uh, it gets me into the parks for free well I paid for it but you know no additional day charges or overnight charges anything like that I couldn't find it you know what it is, where it is so I'm just gonna go in here and uh, if the office is closed I'm gonna bandit camp uh, they've gotten enough of my money over time I'm sure I've paid my dues if the office is open I'm just gonna buy another card it's good for a year from date of issue and I think the last time I got it was when Nick and I went out but that was a year and a half ago I don't know I know I've refreshed it since then uh, probably uh, I think it was like March or April when I got it last time so and if I have to buy another one I'm losing a couple of months but yeah, no big deal it's almost time to renew anywho so here's the park got a uh, golf course out here and it's a nice little place. I've been out here for many, many of my uh, moto camp adventures. Just get out of the city a little bit where it's quieter. Park headquarters, park store, park, park, closed park. I'll catch up with you tomorrow then. If they roust me, they roust me. I'll pay them tomorrow. So I'm going to go back and see. A, how busy is it? B, is my favorite spot available? Gonna find out. Set up camp while it's still light here, hopefully not raining too heavy, and then uh, if it doesn't just unzip and start pissing rain like crazy, uh, I'll probably go out and grab uh, a little bit of food, maybe some snacks to bring back with me, but I don't like having snacks here at my campsite because I've had midnight nibblers uh, come poking around. Mostly deer, raccoons, stuff like that. We don't have bears out here, but we do have coyotes. Don't think I'd want to have to whoop up on a coyote, but you never know. Could happen. So, long, steady road trip here. Uh, you know, just on the back roads, cruising along at 45 to 50. Uh, I'll say that the Navi is a little twitchy, uh, and I've mentioned it before, and I think other owners are probably going to concur with this. Uh, it gets blown around quite a bit in crosswinds, more so than any of my other mini motos. Um, I haven't owned a Grom or a Monkey to know if they do the same thing, but I'm kind of betting not. And uh, it just seems to me that it's the small rear wheel or something about the handling on this combination of the wheel sizes or whatever. Just makes it a little bit flighty. It's not bad, it's just, it's unusual. Uh, the Super Cubs don't do that nearly as much. Uh, they're a lot more stable in crosswinds than this. So those larger wheels make a difference. So it's pretty dead and desolate out here. It's winter time. January what, 8th today. So It's not as green and pretty as it usually is, but that also means that there will be less mosquitoes and uh, flying insects to deal with, hopefully. In the spring, you've... Uh, got to bring all your stuff to cover up and spray and everything because you're definitely on the menu out here. Lots of skeeters, lots of gnats. And it looks like they finally finished their bathhouse here. That's cool. Last time I was here it was under construction. Let's go take a look. Yeah, looks like it's complete, but a lot of these uh, state parks will close their bathhouses at night and that's a little suboptimal when is it that you're going to need to uh, use the restroom probably middle of the night good luck go find a tree <laughs> nice little sandy gravel path and it looks like they're pretty empty so that's a bonus for me I would like to find a place that uh, or a spot that has a picnic table and this is empty <laughs> yeah buddy Everybody else pushed out for this weekend. Uh, my favorite spot is right here, right there, right here, right there, right here, right there, right here. Is that the diamond formation? 54. Is that my spot? Come on. Remind me, people. Is that my spot? Or is this it? I don't recall. 
There's a diamond formation of trees that uh, make it really good. I'll, I'll walk back in there. I don't think this is it. This is too far down. Hey, squirrel! Uh, yes, yeah, definitely not this one. So, I'm going back. Yeah, I think it's 54 or maybe 56. I don't think we've lost any trees. So, hopefully my pattern is still there. The, uh, the diamond formation works really well for hammock and a tarp. Uh, this is not it. It's got to be that one over there. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. They don't like you doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. So those trees right there, that little diamond formation is perfect. And I've even got a picnic table. I'm going to get rained on, but, you know, whatever. So I think I'm just going to set up here. And if they rouse me, they rouse me. Got water, but, of course, I'm not cooking. So I have arrived with 152.4 on the clock. And my fuel, you saw it before I turned it off. Anyway, a little below half. So uh, it looks like I'm probably getting in the mid-90s per gallon. So that puts the range about 90 miles, 85 to 90 miles before this is going to go dry on you. So anywho, uh, I'm going to take advantage of the light mist and rain right now before it gets nasty and uh, go ahead and set up. I'm going to put myself over there. Uh, I'll try to set up a camera and just have it facing that direction. Uh, I need to get my self situated in there. Uh, I'll throw a picture up here of one of my previous camps when I was here on the, I think it was the XT250. Nice little setup. I had a nice chair and uh, light and everything, but I screwed up and I left my uh, box lights at home. Uh, so it's going to be hard for me to do the live stream tonight. I'll maybe go, go get a water bottle or something and I'll put my headlamp behind it, light it up, give me a diffuse light so uh, I can be seen on camera, but uh, if it's really pissing rain a lot, I don't know if I want to get the gear out and be wet tonight with it. So we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody, I'll take you through my camp setup here. Nothing glamorous. I'm a little discombobulated this time because I'm repacking and trying to figure out what I can sort on the Navi, where, how, how much, how little, etc. Uh, but yeah, basically everything came here uh, in the little box underneath and this single bag, uh, dry bag here, D28, whatever this is. Um, yeah, real straightforward. Um, I've got my kit worked down pretty thin as far as the camping gear goes, but uh, <laughs> when you have to bring all the video production stuff, I've got multiple of these uh, cloth bags. Some of them are like poly, so they're a little bit water resistant. These are not. They're just cloth canvas. Uh, but I've got all my gear in here, you know, hot spot. Uh, battery charger for the GoPro. I can plug that into a battery pack or on the bike, whatever. Uh, a couple of little ram ball mounts. It's starting to rain on me. Uh, battery pack, various cables, little phone stand, fold-out phone stand. Uh, plugs to uh, seal up the side of these cameras so they're not getting wet on the port. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I don't need this right now. I'll leave it in there. And it's starting to rain on me, of course. So maybe, perhaps, I should uh, put on my rain gear. Tripods, tripods, tripods. Lots of video gear. It's not as simple anymore as just grabbing my stuff and going. <laughs> I gotta come up with all the gear to record it. Gets to be challenging. And somebody's got the bang bang going on out there. They've been rapid fire. Burning off some money. Uh, clothing. Oop, I guess I better put that back in there too. Huh? Don't want it to get wet for now. Okay, so let's unpack the uh, dry spec. Um, take it over there and dump it out. In fact, maybe I should just ought to do that over there, huh? No, I'm going to set up my chair first. It's easier. What do I got? What do I got? There's my suspension hopefully long enough for what I'm doing today we're gonna to find out if not then have to rethink get up there's the uh, kamek mantis all in one hammock I'm not using their straps because their straps are a little too stretchy so I have a set of uh, Eno uh, Helios straps they work really well uh, these are not my extra long ones so that's why I'm a little concerned I might run out of space but we'll figure it out uh, and here is my personal effects, dry socks, extra shirt, you name it. I uh, don't know what i got in there. Actually, i got multiple of these. I'm not sure who I've got what where. We'll figure it out. Got an extra something here. Um, 
I might have grabbed two personal bags. I've got. I usually keep them ready to go in these. But anyway, no worries. Here's the chair. Super simple. I've been using these chairs forever, man. This thing's been around the country with me. I can't count many times. I'm about eight or ten years old now. I got these when I got my uh, REI Half Down Two Plus tent. That's been a while. You can see all the mud and the dirt. They are veterans. Snap your frame all together. The shock cords for these are getting a little bit stretchy, so I might have to rebuild the shock cords in it one day. But once you get the chair material on there, hey, uh, they stay put because it's all a tension fit. Beat the dirt off of it. And let's put her together. This is the one uh, that's in my uh, uh, channel picture uh, from Circuit of the Americas eight plus years ago. Uh, went up there to camp and I was out there pretty much by myself on a big open grass lot and uh, had the tent set up, the chair set up, and it was all orange orange. It looked pretty cool. Orange green doesn't quite match the Navi, but I don't have a chair of that color. So, first, this guy. The only thing I've been annoyed with over time, as you can see, the uh, the little foot pad thingies come off of this, uh, and they dig into the dirt real bad. So once they dig in and you lift it up, they go and suck your uh, feet right off of there, and good luck. So I usually have to go hunting around the camp and find a rock or something that I can put it on so it doesn't sink. Chair complete. Pack this away so it doesn't blow away. This will come next, later, perhaps. That's the under quilt, and that should do it. I guess I didn't bring my top quilt, but I'm not going to need it because low temp tonight is only going to be down to, uh, I want to say 64 or something, 67. Pretty warm. Uh, I was grabbing all my stuff, and I think I left that one sitting on the bed upstairs. Yep, I did. No problem. Don't need it? Just fine. Yep. Cool. All right. So let's go get this set up. Got the 360 recording here, but I think the chest cam ought to do the ought to do the trick. Yeah, this is going to be. I got not enough strap length here. This will be just fine. Okay then. Sorry, you guys are looking at a tree, aren't you? Get, 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 get. I was gonna put on a, a hat rig, but these cameras are a little heavy for that. I had a little Hero session, uh, five, Hero five session, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, it was great for uh, mounting on a hat. It was absolutely fantabulous. It's very lightweight and uh, fit right on the bill of the hat. I hope these guys don't want this spot because I'm already here. Nope, they're backing in. Good. I'm not reserved. This one doesn't say that it was reserved. It said available, so I'm taking it before anybody else does. Mine. Mine, mine, mine. Helios. And it's starting to rain again. You guys can't see what I'm doing, I apologize. Maybe the 360 will catch it. Okay then. Uh, so, yeah, oh yeah, I got plenty of length here. This is gonna work out just fine. So, here's my uh, adjustable length. These are uh, whoopee slings, essentially. Uh, whoopee slings on a strap. Uh, all am steel, really. Uh, Lightweight, very strong stuff. Doesn't stretch hardly at all, which is why I like them. That is why I like them. The Python straps that came with this are far too stretchy, in my opinion. I've got two different sets of them, and both of them are very stretchy. I like Kamek, but I don't care for their Python straps. Rainfly. 
We'll go on next. I don't need it yet. You can always hang your fly first to give you uh, something to hang under while you're setting up, but it makes it uh, a little tricky because you've got to set it up twice, essentially. You need to reset your your uh, height and tension and all that after you get your uh, hammock strung, so it makes it a little tricky. It's easier to hang the hammock first, hang your fly after. Okay, so here is this side of it. I'm gonna, definitely going to have to shorten it up. I had a lot more length than I thought I was going to have. Look at that, laying on the ground. That's not right. We don't need that, do we? We need this. That's what makes these so great. You just slide them up. And if you still don't have enough adjustment, uh, you know, you can't get them short enough, you can wrap your strap around the tree a couple times and come back through it and, you know, take up this tag end right here. Makes it easier. Uh, that one's okay. I might have to set this one. Why don't we do that? I don't like laying my hammock on the ground. I try not to do that, but I'm doing it. So let's see if I can go around this tree one more time. Yeah, I sure can. Now let's get that guy hung. Oh, that's better. That gets me right up off the ground. Gives me plenty of adjustable length to work with. Okay, so we'll shorten this a bit. This is yeah, this is my head end. I think should be my head end. What the hell is going on, man? No, this is a head end. We thought that thing was on the foot. I guess I mistook. Let's reverse it. I want my head facing that way. I've used this hammock a few times, but I could have sworn the little bag was on the foot, man. Am I just uh, confusicated? I could have sworn it was on the foot. All right, shorten this up. And what you're looking for is a hang height, uh, usually about waist high, a little over waist high, because when you load it, it's going to sink a bit. Uh, so let's shorten this one a, a hair. And it's always better it, with a hammock to have your feet slightly higher than your head. It sounds backwards, but believe me, it's the best way to hang. Uh, when you've got your head higher than your feet, uh, you end up sliding downhill a little bit. It doesn't work out quite right. You usually want your feet just a touch taller than your head. Not a lot, just a little. So this hammock has uh, built-in suspension, uh, uh, ridge line. Uh, everything is all kind of integrated. It's pretty cool. Don't need this hanging out. I'm not going to need all the stakes, but I will need a few of them. Looks like I lost two already. I guess I better go find those, eh? Oh, they're over there. Fell out on the ground. Luckily, they're pretty bright. So I'm going to need at least two stakes. Uh, I could tie off to the tree here, but I'll probably uh, stake to the ground. It depends on how much wind and rain there is. Uh, if you've got it out, uh, porch mode is what we call that. Uh, the wind can get underneath it and lift it up and create problems for you. So normally if you got driving rain or wind, you want it to be down pretty close to the body of the hammock. Okay, so hanging the fly. Fly, fly away. Don't fly away yet. Hammock, uh, that is head end. Logo goes toward the head because this is not a symmetric tarp. Uh, it's a little bit wider at the head than it is the foot. This is the one that I was in that uh, nasty thunderstorm in Oklahoma, and the, uh, the line locks gave up on it and uh, I got drenched. Uh, and I didn't bring my uh, figure nine carabiners that I usually keep with this kit, I forgot. Uh, so it might do it again today. I might end up getting wet in the storm tonight. We'll see how things play. So how this works is you just run around the tree, just like your suspension. Uh, and you try to get uh, just over where your suspension is. I don't know if you guys are seeing it, anything I'm doing at all. Uh, and all this little guy does is just lock right back against itself. Give me the hook, give me the hook. Uh, so, I'm 
trying to keep the camera angled upward. This is a chest rig and it doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. Um, so this is how this works. Uh, we cinch up all this slack and it's just tied off against itself. I'm trying not to step on it, which I am. And uh, you adjust your length back and forth to where you get uh, where you want to be. Uh, and then what I've learned to do with this to keep it from slacking, these things tend to let go uh, when they're wet and uh, if there's a lot of wind load on them, they just, they jeel and loosen up. So I run half hitches back around this thing and lock it off to itself or back up here against the uh, hook. So keeps it behaving itself. So take this other end over here and repeat the process. And it always takes so much longer to uh, narrate these things than it does to just do it, but I don't mind. <laughs> it's a kite. Need to get this thing tied down. We are getting some wind out here. We're getting 20 mile an hour gusts. I'm gonna get it tension so it doesn't fly away. Okay. So now the tricky part about this is getting your uh, your height set. Depending on how your hang is, you, you usually you're shooting for a 30 degree angle off your suspension. Uh, the, t the foot is a little less than 30 degrees right now, but when I weight this, it's going to even it out. Uh, you want to get the tarp positioned in a way that you're getting full coverage end to end. So I need to slack this, tighten that, and bring it this way a little bit. And then I also need to. Uh, maybe bring it down. We'll see. Uh, every now and then, depending on how steep your angle is here, you might need to bring your uh, tarp suspension below your hammock suspension. Normally it's better to have it up. So bring that this way a little bit. Get my foot set about right. I would rather my feet be wet than my head be wet. And when you tension this thing down, it's also going to take some slack out of it. So that's why having it above the uh, hammock suspension is usually the better fit. So you want it to be almost tight. You don't want it to be piano spring string tight. Uh, and then as you pull it down, it's really going to tension it up. So let's get these lines out of the way and untangled. And of course they tangled themselves because if you let any loose cords or cables uh, mingle with each other, they're going to do a spaghetti routine on you. So this is where the uh, stakes come in. Where is my end? There's the end. Got bugs eating on me already. They're just gnats, but get off, dude. So you set your, uh, your hook and your loop facing this direction. You don't want it to face this way or it slips right off. So this is the way I'm going to place it. Uh, I'm going to set my length about right here until I get everything s set and figured out. And normally, unless you're on a really rocky surface, you can just, oops, you can just uh, step on those stakes and they go right in. And you want to put them in at about a 30 to 45 degree angle away from your load. Otherwise they get yanked right out of the ground when the uh, wind pulls on them. So that's one. We'll get two. I always try to hank these cords up in a way that they're easy to unwind, but they won't unwind themselves. Because man, when they get tangled up with each other in the in the bag. Oh, nothing's more infuriating than trying to get them undone quickly in the rain or in the wind like this when they're just knotted up. Oh my god, it's so annoying. Same story. About right there should do. And you can change the tension on this as you go, but just want to get a rough fitment the first time. And I'm not centered quite, so I need to bring it this way. I've got too much tension there, not enough tension here, so... Yeah, I'll sort it out in a minute. Like I say, as you put tension on all of this, it starts taking shape. So you want to give yourself a little bit of leeway and then go back and recinch it and take a couple shots at it. If you're really proficient at it, then you usually get it first try, but there's always going to be a little adjustments based on wind and your uh, ground conditions, angles, and things like that. 
going downhill is always a tricky one because you can't really judge the angle properly until you try to do it and then you go oh crap it's, I'm not over the center of my hammock am I yep that ought to give me plenty of coverage for tonight might be able to pull it outward a little bit uh, give me some place to sit uh, let's see Okay, step her in there. So, notice how it really pulled down. It got uh, much lower. Now, these side tie outs, that's for the other two stakes. Uh, I could always take these uh, around the tree and just loop it back to itself, do something like this to give me more room, which is what I'll probably do for uh, the uh, stream tonight. Give me somewhere to hang out while it's raining on me. We'll find out. Might not be necessary. That's why I like these trees, because it's almost dead center, and you can pull this out, give yourself a nice porch. Sorry, you're not looking at much, are you? Uh, the other thing I do, just as housekeeping, uh, once I've gotten it all lined up, yeah, I'm pretty much center. Look at that. I did a good job. Uh, once I get everything lined up the way I want, uh, I always hank the cords so I don't trip on them like I did a second ago, uh, and just doing the figure eight wrap like this keeps them out of your way they don't get tangled this way and then you just uh, go around three or four times stagger the wrap and then the last loop just catch it and uh, pull it through and lock it off to itself simple done game over lather rinse repeat so this I'm gonna go ahead and come up here to my hook and we're going to Start putting some half hitches in this bad boy. And lock it underneath and to itself. I missed. I missed. We'll just go down through the eye. Give her a twist. Come up and over the hoop. And then uh, pull it back against itself and do that a couple times to uh, make sure it stays locked off to itself and doesn't slack in the wind and the rain like it did in <laughs> that nasty thunderstorm. A couple of hitches will usually hold it. And then hank up the cord. These also act as uh, water breaks, drip lines for you to some extent. Not the greatest, but they work. I don't know if you guys are seeing anything at all. I have no clue. Same goes for this guy. I don't like these hanging on the ground because uh, I have ants and spiders crawling up the silly things. So they get hanged up as well. That's that. Out of the way. No more tripping. No strangling yourself in the middle of the night. Hopefully. Same on this end. Give her a twist, come back across the adjuster, tie it back, and then just a couple of half hitches over the whole thing. I think that's called a half hitch. I don't know, you got any not pros out there you want to correct me? I'm sure somebody's going to be bitching. Grab my last two stakes that are here. Get out of there, get out of there, thank you. And I can pull these down, or if I get real creative, I can use it, use them as a toggle to uh, wrap around the tree and tie itself back to itself. So there we go, that'll give me a little sitting area. All right. Longer than it needed to be. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get all my cameras set up. I think that thing probably gave up. Yeah, still going. Howdy.
Okay, so here we go. Got camp all set up behind me over there. I'm going to head out for a few minutes to grab uh, some drinks and some snacks. And uh, here's a perfect example of the <laughs> really weak headlight on the Navi uh, at idle. So that's why I'm switching it from uh, AC over to DC and put some LEDs in this bad boy. You get above idle, it's okay, but even then it's just a incandescent bulb. Halogen, not the greatest. LED is going to put a lot more light out, less heat, less power. Win-win. So here's the high beam. Doink. Not much brighter, it's just further throw. Still pretty yellow, actually. The low beam's got better coverage. Uh, these 35-35s, uh, uh, they turn off the low beam section to save power. That way you're not pulling uh, double. Ugh, well. So there's a uh, fuel station just down the road a piece. So that's where I'm headed. I think I am. If I can figure out where I am. I think I'm going the right way. I think I am. I think I am. Am I? I think I am. Yeah, there's the restrooms. They don't have this lit through here. I was kind of thinking they would have... Oh no, I went the wrong side. I'm on the little cabin side. Yeah, see, it's dark. I don't know where I'm going. These are the little uh, cabins that you can rent. So, what I need to do is get out on the main road. Uh, passed right by the bathhouse over there. Doo -doo -doo. So, the high beam reaches out further, but it's not very bright. These are old school uh, halogen lamps, not even bright ones at that. Okay, how do I get up? Just go in circles? There it is. That's the out, right, 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 right. Is that the out, right? Is that the out? Yeah, that's the out. Do, 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 do. Bumpity bump. And I hope it doesn't just cut loose and rain on me because I'm not bringing any of my rain gear. It's back there at camp. I left it. I might end up soggy quasi. Not even wearing my gloves, which is not the greatest of ideas considering this front tire is slickery. If you haven't ridden your Navi in the rain yet, you're, uh, you're, you're in for a treat. <laughs> I say that with all sarcasm intended. See, low fill is much better. High beam reaches out, but you lose the low. LED is in this thing's future. And if I were smart, I'd probably fill up on fuel while I'm over there. That fuel station, because I'm... Uh, yeah, see these dim lights in here? I don't know if you guys can see that at all. The low light on the GoPro is not very good, but you really can't make out a lot of detail because that light is so dim. So I'm going to be uh, augmenting the lighting in this uh, cluster here. I'll put a, a couple of lights on it. Uh, the one up here is, you know, probably a little T10 or something like that in the top end. Uh, put one on there at the top. It'll be much brighter, but I'll probably put something down here by the bottom uh, corners filling, you know, to give a little bit better visibility over there by the fuel would be good as well. Minor tweaks. Just little upgrades. Function, safety, customization. Why not? So we're going to go down the road about three or four miles here to I-10. I'm just north of I-10. Uh, I don't even know what highway this is. It's not 359. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, just north of I-10. Uh, about five, six miles. Uh, and then uh, off to the park road there. Yeah, that thing's kind of hard to read. The, the whole center of the gauge is just dark. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. I'm trying to look at this traffic and point down at the same time. It's not real good. You got real bad headlight, dude. Flagging down spaceships on one side and nothing on the other. Uh, yeah, that's that's hard to read at night. It's very, very, very dim. It's going to be fixed. So I don't even know what I'm going to get for uh, food tonight. Just snacks. And I'm not really all that hungry. I say that now. I'll get really hungry later and regret not getting more, probably. But I don't like having a lot of food at camp because you get critters... Comes sniffing around for food, tearing into your stuff. <laughs> when uh, 
fatty with a firearm nick uh and adrian and i and neil and uh joe we met joe there at the campgrounds up at queen wilhelmina um nice brights jack off uh we uh set up at Queen Wilhelmina Park and we had a nasty storm roll through but that first night that we were there wasn't horrible it was okay we woke up to a decent morning uh, but some critters had stolen all of my food and I mean all of it uh, I had oatmeal and some granola bars and stuff like that and it's still sealed up in their packages and then in turn they were in a Ziploc bag uh, sitting on the table with other stuff and uh, I went looking for my breakfast the next morning and it's gone I mean the whole bag everything's gone so I'm only presuming uh, or, or assuming that it was raccoons because they had to carry the whole bag away they didn't rip into it right there they just absconded with the whole thing so I didn't have breakfast the next morning now the last time I was through here this was under construction and there was this giant pile of gravel right here in the middle of the road and uh, you had to divert off around it so it looks like they've gotten this intersection done and I just overshot my turn and I'm going to do an illegal UE because I don't know where I go in now look at this it's dark okay still can't see shit can't see shit too much glare from those lights is it a curb in front of me is it a hole is it a Grand Canyon. Ooh, well, ooh, yeah. yeah, so you can't get through. So this is the wrong lot. So I don't know how you get to that. I guess I'm going to go around the long way through the uh, truck entrance and I don't know, sort it out. Ugh, geez, that's rough. There we go. Now I can get here. So I'm going to be getting out of. Uh, chip bags tonight I think oh look they got a subway hey maybe I'll just get subway and some drinks that's a good idea I forgot subway was here cool I'm gonna have a subway action packed okay well I definitely won't be hungry now I'll get a subway and uh, take some water and stuff like that back catch up at the end of it yep should have brought the rain gear just started pouring <laughs> Murphy's Law a quick downpour, maybe it'll go away. We'll see. I'm gonna have soggy ass getting back to the campsite now. You the one you're driving? Yeah. Yeah, why? I live out in Katy. I like riding these little bikes. I take them all over the place just to have fun. This is, uh, how many CC is that? Uh, 110. 110. It's the Navi. Uh, they originally released in India back in 2016. What's the name of it? Navi. Oh, Navi. Navi. Honda Navi. Oh, it's a Honda Navi? It's a Honda, yeah. Oh, Honda makes it a good. Yeah. I remember back home, we still drive, you know, 50 cc. Mm -hmm. It's been driving, you know, years and years, years and mm -hmm. years. It's falling apart. It's still driving. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. That's so far. This is 110. It has a speed on it. Yeah. It'll do almost 55 miles per hour. Close. That's the most it does? 50 to 55, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it. But it's still, you know? Yeah, I just keep it on the back roads and the side highways. And yeah. It's fun. So you need uh, insurance for that? Yeah. Oh, you have insurance and then... Uh... Motorcycle endorsement, motorcycle license, but insurance oh. is really cheap. I think I pay $80 for the whole year. Like seven dollars a month. Here, <laughs> costs less than that sandwich, you know. Yeah. And how many miles it runs? A gallon? Almost a hundred miles to the gallon. Come on, it is serious. Yeah. <laughs> so you pay uh, less than eight thousand? Two thousand. No. Suggested price is one thousand eight hundred seven. Eighteen oh seven. When you add taxes and the license fee and all that, I paid 2600 It's cheap. Yeah. Super cheap. Great. Come on, $2,000? Yeah, it's a $2,000 bike. Brand new with a one-year unlimited mile warranty. 
I'm going to buy one. I'm going to try Get one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there is a dealership in uh, Kenya, I think. Yeah, at, at Wild West. Uh, I have another one coming in there. Uh, I'm their first reservation, uh, and I'm going to give one away on my YouTube channel. I, I uh, have a good night. Thanks. Okay, I will. <laughs> nice guy. It's from Bangladesh originally. Okay. Uh, it's wet. I'm going to have soggy ass because I don't have my rain gear. Hopefully, I don't get another giant downpour like just came down a few minutes ago. I mean, it cut loose. It was just a whiteout outside. And right as I turned the camera on, it calmed down. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do the live stream tonight for multiple reasons. Bandwidth and rain. We'll see. Soggy shorts. Oh, yeah. Soggy shorts. Oh, I noticed something today. Uh, I was messing with the foot pegs on this. The foot pegs on the Navi aren't foldable. I didn't even think to check that. They don't fold. So if you lay this thing over on the side, the uh, foot pegs are going to be kind of a stopper for you, you know, almost like a crash guard. But uh, yeah, they don't uh, they don't fold. This is not uh, it's a rigid foot peg. So if you pull these off of here, you could probably uh, put floorboards or something different on there. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be a live stream night or not. <clears throat> and this headlight sucks. I mean, sucks. Now, watching all those uh, videos from India on the Navi and the Activa, saying, I feel like I'm holding a candle in front of my face. Yeah, no kidding, man. This headlight blows. I don't have a lot of brights on. You're brighting me? Are you shitting me, dude? <laughs> oh, it's funny. Did you guys see that? The guy's brighting me. you got to be fucking kidding me. I'm driving around with a D-cell flashlight. <laughs> brighten me. Give me a break. I think my headlamp that's in my pocket puts off more light than this thing does. If I could figure out a way to strap it to my helmet, I could probably double my lumen output right now. And I am soaked to the bone already. I wish I had brought my rain gear. I gambled it and lost. It was a coin toss. 50-50 for soggy balls, and I lost the toss. Gamble, gamble, you lose. Soggy balls, soggy balls. Not full-on swamp balls yet, but they are soggy. Note to self, next time take the rain gear even if you think you're not going to need it. Doofus. Okay, now it's officially Swamp Balls. I didn't bring a change of uh, jeans, so that's suboptimal. Just brought shirts and socks. Is this me? Is this me? No. Can't see a damn thing. 62. You can't see diddly. I need to get my headlamp out. I can see more with a headlamp than I can do anything else. Normally, I think you guys have probably seen it in my previous uh, camps. I uh, I keep my uh, 66. Am I in the wrong section? No, I've gone too far around. Um, I uh, put my light out. So I've got a homing beacon when I uh, get into camp. That's not it. Ah, that's not it. Where am I? Oh, this is going to suck. Did I go too, way too far around? What did I do? Where is my tent hammock? Oh, I'm over there. Shit, I went way too far. Dark, rain, can't see squat, don't really know what you're doing. Until you have passed it. I don't know where I am, dude. Everything looks so different in the dark. It's got to be right over here. Looks like I'm going to have to park and go find what I'm doing. Is that me? Is that me? That's me. <laughs> Dim headlight. Okay then. I've arrived. It's totally dark. You guys can't see anything. My eyes have adjusted kind of, sort of to it. Just couldn't see myself way back here in the woods. Uh, so I'm going to shut this down. You're looking at darkness. Just listening to me talk. And my helmet mount is coming apart. 
I'll see you under the tarp in a minute. All right, welcome to uh, camping in the rain. <laughs> I'm uh, shining a red light in your face because I you won't be able to see anything otherwise. Oh, we got light now. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one tonight. I'm trying to set this out here where it can capture the rain but not really get in the rain. A couple of really good claps already. Real bright ones, like somebody had a flash bulb over here next to me. Calm and then blam! Just a huge bright shot. <laughs> like, okay, that's going to be loud. So now I'm trying to find all my stuff. Dark. Gotta preserve my night vision a little bit. I think the live is off. Can you hear him? I'm gonna be able to do it and keep everything dry. Try it, see what I can do. It's not looking promising. Same time to keep you guys uh, in focus. I've got tripods, but I've got the tripod mounted on the camera that you're uh, being recorded from right now. Still looking through into my world. Alright, set this over here, that over there. I'm gonna get all my gear situated. And the next fun is I've got to get my boots uh, and my wet stuff off. And uh, not in the uh, not in the hammock with me. So let's see if I hung myself in the right back. I did. I win. First try. I'm gonna have to adjust my hang height uh, in, the, in the rain, which is good. And I've got at least 18 inches to the ground, so I don't have to worry about my uh, under quilt getting unduly soaked. Uh, tricks of the trade for camping in the wilderness uh, bring kitchen trash bags and or you know, other like these little t-shirt bags you guys may not be able to see this on camera but anyway plastic bags put your helmet in a bag and put your boots in a bag if you don't you're gonna wake up to spiders and creepy trolleys in both of them and Murphy's Law reigns supreme you won't know it until you're down the road and something either starts crawling across your face or biting you ask me how I know so, those are now secure to uh, sit there on the ground. Uh, sometimes I'll bring the stuff in the tent with me, but or in the uh, hammock in this case. Uh, what I typically do is uh, give you guys a better light on the subject, so you might be able to see that. Uh, I usually keep my camp chair right next to my hammock uh, or under a tarp or something like that, and I put all my stuff on the chair. So not sitting in the mud, you know. Uh, now my dry bag that's underneath me over here, uh, that can sit in the mud, I don't care. It's not gonna hurt. So, fun, fun. I'm gonna let that uh, 360 right there record as long as possible. So uh, we get a lot of good rain sounds. Love the rain. I should tell my wife where I am. I don't think I told her I was just going to camp out tonight. Ugh. Ooh, that dang wet. It calms down, I might be able to do the live stream. There's too much background noise. It's just going to be impossible for you guys to hear. Uh, I do have my uh, headphone, uh, phone, headphone, what you diggy, that I should be able to. Uh, plug in, but it doesn't really stay plugged in very well on my phone for some silly reason. Unknown why. Oh, I forgot one more. Uh, so I guess the next bit is I need to find my yellow. And you can't see yellow when you got a red headlamp going, so you've got to turn that light on. Be my headphones. Yeah. 
color code the bag so I know what's in there. As I said before, you know, with all the uh, audio video gear, it makes this uh, much more challenging of an exercise than uh, it would be just going out and doing it you know, without, without all the nonsense. I like traveling fast and light sometimes. That's why I don't record and post all of these uh, videos. Because sometimes I just want to go out and do it and unwind. I don't want to have to worry about the video production and all that. It's much more fun to go with somebody else and do it. Because then you got the camaraderie and none of the production chores. So, as long as I don't uh, knock that over, we're good. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Zip up, keep the skeeters out. Because they like getting in here in the dry weather with me. Guys, I'm trying to figure out how I can arrange this and flip the end of the car. Up here. A little tight. This is the way to put this over here. I bet I can do that. I bet I can do it. I'll find a way. I'll make a way. No, I'm right now. Oh, crap. Oh, video production. In the rain. Limited space. Fun to make. down a little bit. It's been raining pretty hard for about the last 45 minutes. I'm soaked. Because I did a boo-boo. I, uh, I decided to go grab a Subway sandwich and some water and some snacks for the night. I didn't take the rain gear. And of course, as soon as I left, uh, the rain 